Mm. Oh, Kyle, we've done the project. Uh, High five, man. Kyle? Mmm, peanut butter. <laughs> oh, cool. 911, what's your emergency? What do you know about anaphylaxis? Well, this is what I know. Anaphylaxis is a full body wide reaction which is considered distributive shock. It is a reaction to an allergen which activates a specific IgE antibodies. On contact with the allergen, antigens are released into the bloodstream and then come in contact with the antibodies attached to the basophils and mast cells. A series of enzymes is released in the basophils which causes an influx of calcium into the cell. This initiates the fusion of granules within the cell membrane which is called degranulation. This then causes the release of histamine into the extracellular space. These mediators travel throughout the body and bind to their specific receptor sites. This causes vasodilation and increased vascular permeability, leading to a drop in BP. It also affects the smooth muscles in the lungs, causing bronchoconstriction. H1 and H2 receptors are stimulated, causing headaches and flushing. Some myocardial depression occurs with tachycardia. Some patients may experience abdominal pain. All right, here we are. We have basal dilation of the smooth muscles uh, in the vasculature. We have urticaria, and we have bronchospasm. We also have a drop in blood pressure, bronchoconstriction, tachycardia, angioedema, uh, along with chest pain uh, and tightening, uh, and you may even feel a pending sense of doom. So what we're mainly worried about is the bronchoconstriction, bronchospasm, the angioedema, and the vasodilation. The urticaria isn't so much of a worry because it's just basically a sign, you know, it's a rash. Uh, what will uh, harm the patient and lead to death will be the angioedema uh, for the most part because you have that constriction uh, of the area, that swelling. Here he is! Buddy, are you okay? Are you all right? You know, okay, what's going on? Jamie, we need the drugs. Okay. <laughs> so after you assess your patient and suspect anaphylaxis, you will want to get IV access and administer high flow O2 to your patient while your partner is drawing up your medications. If your patient is breathing adequately on your own, then you'll want to give them high flow O2 via non rebreather. If they are not, you'll want to use the BDM. And once your medications are drawn up, first thing you want to do is give them epinephrine 1 in 1000 via IM. After that's administered, you want to give them Benadryl, either IM or IV. And then you want to give them Venolin. And you can give that one of two ways. You can give it in a nebulizer if they're breathing adequately on their own. And if not, you can give it to them via the MBI and the BBM. And then if they have any significant amount of laryngeal edema that is not corrected via that epinephrine, then you'll want to get ALS there as soon as possible so they can intubate or perform a tricothyrotomy if needed. Epi! Epinephrine is the number one counter to histamine. It causes vasoconstriction when it attaches to its specific A1 receptors. This will bring up the blood pressure. Aside from airway obstruction, hypotension will result in a lowered blood return to the heart causing systemic failure and damage to the brain and heart tissue. Ventolin! Yep. Benadryl! In-hospital treatment for anaphylactic shock doesn't differ a whole lot from pre-hospital treatment. They're still going to originally give the treatment triangle, the epinephrine, the Benadryl, and the Venolin. And after that, the only other medication they're going to give in hospital is a corticosteroid such as Pomacort. And then after that, they're going to have to stay in hospital for another 10 to 24 hours, depending on the doctor, for further evaluation to make sure no more symptoms arise during that time. And during that time, the doctor is going to prescribe two things to the patient, an EpiPen and a medical alert bracelet. And then they're also going to be referred to an immunologist for further evaluation, consultation, and treatment.